And this is just complete disrespect. Grab their throat, turn them upside down, slam them down. You can tell Snake's been doing his push-ups. So he just, just body lifted this guy out of nowhere. This isn't like a mixed martial arts fight or a prize fight. You're not trying to like set traps or work your jab or tire your opponent out. Violence, 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 violence. As many strikes as you can, as fast as you can. Welcome back to Gameology. RJ Clifford here, Sirius XM radio host, retired fighter, professional retired fighter, current washed up has been. I've been doing a lot of fun video games with you guys, all fighting games. Now we're gonna do some close quarters combat type games. There's a lot going on, but there is some hand to hand combat. So I'll walk you through what's realistic, what isn't, and what's just good old fashioned hand kicking. Let's have some fun. All right, first up, we're gonna take a look at Uncharted 4, our hero Nathan. Nothing like a good old fashioned prison brawl to get the party started. So it looks like he doesn't have a lot of friends in the crowd. Don't wanna throw him back at this. So now he's in a, almost like a rear naked choke situation. He has to worry about getting choked. He's being held stationary, letting people hit him. You gotta fight the hand that's choking you. First thing you do, whether in the street or in the cage, you gotta fight that choking arm. Because if you go unconscious, God only knows what they're gonna do to you. Now he's somewhere else. This is great fighting up against the cage wall. You've got someone stuck there, they can't retreat. Close quarters combat, punches to the head, punches to the body, knees to the gut. You can do a lot of damage when your opponent's just got his back stuck up against a stationary wall, fence, or in this case, some sort of mechanical device. Oh, jumping front kick. Okay, good move and bad move, right? It's where keeping it real goes wrong. It's nice to be able to do one big gigantic strike against somebody. Get him out of the way. Don't worry about setting up combinations. You're in a multi-opponent situation, just do it. The problem with that jumping kick though, is you land on the ground. Now, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're fine because you push your opponent away. But if you push your opponent away, his homie's gonna come around and stomp on your head. So this is a great move right here. An underhook while pushing the head down. You can keep your opponent exactly where you want. They can't punch you, they can't kick you, and you can throw knees on them. So Nathan was really smart to get out of that position ASAP, because it is a deadly place to be. All right, Nathan's busted out of jail, and now he's into hunting for treasure bow. Now remember, Nathan isn't a trained fighter, so this is all just kind of just basic instinct out of him. And he's got good instincts, right? Goes behind a guy, gets him in rear naked choke, chokes him unconscious. Now it takes more than three seconds for someone to go unconscious with a rear naked choke. It takes a little while longer than that. But when you're playing a video game, you don't want to have to sit there for 15 seconds to make a guy get choked unconscious. So I get what the gamers did here. All right, now he's in a moving truck. A lot of moving parts. You don't have your feet really under you quite as well. So you got to get your punches in when you can. Of course, anytime you can throw someone's head against an iron bar, always good. Kick him out, drive the car. So you can tell he's not really a trained fighter with what he's doing, but he's got good instinct because he's throwing things really jerky, but he's landing the punches, he's being effective, he's knocking guys out and staying alive. Fighting for the gun, perfect move there because you're both have your hands used up by fighting for the gun. What's he do? Takes a seat on a crate, pushes the guy away. Your legs are much stronger than your arms. I've got a gun, he's on the floor. Score one for Nathan. All right, let's get into Metal Gear Solid 5. Our hero Snake is out and about. All right, now he's facing an opponent. The guy's grabbing onto him, so he's starting to punch. Good old hockey fighting, right? Really great technique here. You see his opponent trying to stab him with the sword. He clears the way and kind of parries the attack. You can't block a sword, right, unless you have a shield. You have to parry it. So he uses their momentum, pushes the sword, uses that momentum to push him and keep him going in that direction. Great technique. Flat facing his opponent. This is a great move here. He's got what's called a rear standing position, but he's holding him high. Normally you want to get like a rear waist lock and control their entire body. But if you're holding them high, if you can get their feet going one way, you will send their head going the other way. And that's exactly what Snake did. Bam, face full of gravel. Another really good way to avoid a knife strike, right? Again, can't block a blade coming at you. You'll block and get yourself cut up. But if you can keep their momentum going in the wrong direction, you can then manipulate where they're going next. So he moves the knife, grabs the face, bam, choke slam, guy on the ground. Same thing, clears the weapon so the shot doesn't come to him. And not only does he clear the weapon using his right arm, he's also loading up his right hand so he can throw a really good right cross. In boxing, where I would throw a left hook, it loads up my right hand, same thing when he's clearing the gun. Clears the gun, it's rotating his hips so he can load up a really powerful right hand and get a knockout punch. Oh, and okay, so this one's a good one too. He elevates him with his hips, and I believe he sweeps the rear leg to get the legs going one way, and so he can flat back his opponent going the other way. 
And this is just complete disrespect. Grab their throat, turn them upside down, slam them down. You can tell Snake's been doing his push-ups. He just, just body lifted this guy out of nowhere. This is my favorite throw of the entire game. Gets his left arm across, lifts him with his hips, and then you notice he uses his right leg to sweep the legs of his enemy. So that way, with his legs going up one way, the back goes down the other way. That will knock the wind out of you. <coughs> if you're not unconscious. And it's standard issue judo throw grabs the shirt, or if it was judo, it would be a gi, turns his hips, extends that leg, it's over tea kettle, right to his back. Clears the gun, leg kick, jab, jab, punch. So this is really great technique of using martial arts to clear the gun. Throws the kick, gets him off balance, actually jabs down and punches the gun to keep the rifle muzzle pointed away from him, then comes over the top with the right hand. All right, we're taking a look at Last of Us 1 and 2, fighting zombies, fighting survivors. So we're starting right here when he's on the stairs, and you never want to have the low ground when they're fighting. You always want to have the high ground. Our hero somehow is able to get the better of his enemy here, even though he's low enough. He uses a lot of body shots because that's closer, throw him down the stairs, hopefully he breaks his neck. All right, running, striking attack. So now, he's fighting a zombie, right? So when you're fighting a zombie, you don't want to get close. You don't want to get bit. You don't want to get turned into a zombie yourself. So you want to throw a lot of straight punches. You want to come in fast because zombies are slow. You want to keep them away from you. Do as much damage as you can with them as far away from you as possible. Okay, so now this is a human. You can tell because he's wearing a gas mask. You don't have to worry about getting bit. All bets are off. But he's so used to fighting zombies, he keeps doing the fight. And he does a throat punch. So this is one of the craziest strikes you can throw. You don't see it that often because if you're a smart fighter, you keep your chin down, right? You want to keep your chin down because you want to get punched in the chin. That's how you get knocked out. If you're not a trained fighter, like I'm assuming Mr. Gas Mask here isn't, he has his chin up. So now he's got a beautiful target. Punch him right in the trachea. You're not breathing right. You're not, you're not swallowing right. You're going down. Again, big punches, big hooks, a lot of power. The only downside of doing those really powerful strikes takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of power. And you've got a lot of different opponents, you gotta conserve your energy sometimes. But if you're a life or death situation, you're just running on adrenaline, you probably don't have that governor switch going on in your head. You're just throwing heat, trying to get everybody away from you. Anytime your opponent is down by your knees, every time without fail, soccer kick, foot stomp, or knee. It's the most damage to them against the strongest bones of your body. Power shots, power shots, get them out of there. And again, when they're down, kick them in the face. Problem solved. Switch to your gun. And now you've got a weapon. Butt of the gun, right to the face. So this is good. He threw, it looked like it was an elbow there, which is great, because when you're fighting in a boxing match, not only do you have 10 or 12 ounce gloves on, you've got your hands wrapped. You've got your wrists wrapped, your knuckles wrapped, your fingers are all wrapped. These tiny little bones called metacarpals, they're very brittle, right? Our hands were designed to paint the Sistine Chapel and sew blankets. Now we're using them as blunt force objects. In fights on the street, you don't have gloves on. You don't have your wrist taped. You don't have your knuckles taped. So when you're punching with that, you're gonna break your hand. If you have an opportunity to throw with an elbow or like the butt of a gun, do that every time. Save your hands, because the last thing you want in a post-apocalyptic world is to have two busted hands. Oh God, now he's fighting guys with axes. This is where you gotta keep your head in a swivel. This is where you gotta move. When you're fighting somebody with a weapon that's long, you gotta get inside because they have reach on you, right? They've got a you know, 24 inch ax. You can't fight 36 inches away because they can hit you, you can't hit them. What the downside is, is because they have a heavy object with a really heavy metal head, they can swing, but it takes them a while to recover. So you dodge, dodge, and as they rear up again to go, that's when you close the distance and do your close quarter combat. She throws the baseball bat so far, the bat ends up behind them, Barry Bond style. That's when you come in with your attack because they have to keep moving to keep attacking. And as the second that bat clears, you close the distance and you have the advantage. And now he's fighting guys with knives. This is my nightmare. Dirty bathroom, knife. If you get cut, you're probably gonna get syphilis. So might as well just bash their face up against the concrete. All right, up next, Watch Dogs Legion. So great way to avoid the punch and some acrobatic kicking. There you go. So you can do that when you're one-on-one. -on -one. You can risk doing a really big technique because if you fall, you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're just facing somebody. If, he, if you're facing two, three, or four other guys, you do not hit the deck no matter what because they'll just come in and just soccer stomp you. So this is great, another throat punch that will absolutely wreck your opponent. Keep attacking forward, keep blitzing. This isn't like a mixed martial arts fight or a prize fight. You're not trying to like set traps or work your jab or tire your opponent out. Violence, 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 violence. As many strikes as you can, as fast as you can. Bade the uppercut and spitting jumping kick. 
and switch your mask. So these guys do a really good job of evading their opponent's first strike by stepping backward, letting them strike, and then once they're done with their combinations, they execute their combinations. These guys are very defensively sound. Switch into your pig mask. No, I will not be your future bacon. Overhand right, left to the body, uppercut. Headbutt, because you got a gas mask on. Body shot, and uppercut, down they go. Backward somersault. All right, good little sweep there. And goes into a choke. Sneaking up behind an opponent, kick them while they're down. Perfect. Always rather attack them from behind than from the front. And if you have a cloaking device, always use it. So he chokes him out with a different move here. So he's been using this nylon cord to choke somebody. There's two different types of chokes that you use in mixed martial arts. Blood chokes and trachea chokes. So if I'm getting you in like a rear naked choke, I'm shutting off the carotid arteries here, not letting blood go to the brain. After a few seconds, you slowly pass out. The trachea choke means I'm just cutting off air and crushing your windpipe. Much more dangerous, much more painful, much more likely to cause severe permanent damage. If you're messing around with somebody in like a scrambling situation, you're grappling with somebody to say, hey, do you wanna get choked out with the blood choke or an air choke? You always take air choke. And the good part about having those nylon choking cords that it uses, you do both. You're crushing the trachea and you're shutting off the carotid artery. Camouflage, kick the leg out and choke from the front. So you can do the nylon choke from the front. In MMA, you would do what's called a ninja choke from the front. There's guillotines and other things you can do there. But again, nylon cord, don't need as much technique. You've got something that's gonna just crush their throat. Sneaky, sneaky, and nylon cord, and you're choking and choking, and you're sleeping. Good night, sweet dreams, see you next time. Camouflage, this guy's on his phone, looking at Twitter, bam. Takes him down, punches him unconscious. Again, sneaking up from behind. Oh, butt of the gun to the back of the head. Ooh, he shoots him in the leg, then attacks him. If I got shot in the leg, I'm done. I'd be like, you win, move on. Just don't kill me. I, you just shot me in the leg. Oh, a little hip throw, get him to the ground, and it was enough to knock him out. He must have a really powerful throw. Take the selfie. A little before and after. Takes the gun out. Bam, pistol whip. Pistol whip again. Ooh, great technique there. Catch his arm behind him, shoot him in the back of the head. Shoot him low and then punch him. Oh, and then grab him and then shoot him again. See, I don't see why he's not just shooting him in the chest for kill shots right away. Maybe he likes to play with his food. So he's going shot in the leg, mess him up striking, shoot him again. Hope he's got a lot of ammo. All right, surprise attack, wait, shot to the leg. Oh, she took it like a champ. Shot in the leg, didn't even phase her. She's got bulletproof knees. All right, sneak from behind. It's kind of like a weird kind of underhook, but from behind, but it can push their head down so they can't really have power to punch back and you can just start unloading uppercuts. All right, that's kind of a weird choke there. Coming under the arm. Normally you want to go both arms over the shoulders and under the chin across the neck. He went under the armpit and across. So you can still kind of do a submission there. Maybe he used this hand to like just grab the windpipe, which is no fun. Or maybe he shot him. It's a video game, because I want every one. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I loved Metal Gear Solid 5 because you can tell the game developers were like ex-judo black belts or something because those throws and those trips that Snake was doing were so clean, so realistic, the way he used his hips and his feet. Very, very fun. Can't wait to play. Can't wait to play all of them. It's a lot of realistic fighting, a lot of unrealistic fighting, but all in all, a really good time. Again, I'm RJ Clifford. You can follow me on Twitter at RJ Clifford MMA. I'm also on Instagram also at RJ Clifford MMA. Make sure you follow Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. Till next time, later. Three, two, one. Now we're gonna do some... Is that bad? What was it background noise? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, three, two, one.